Okay, we are going to tie a feathered game changer with a deer hair slider head on it. Um, you know, with the, the game changer style body, it's going to move quite a bit, and the slider head helps it kind of dig in and wobble. Um, but this, this thing looks awesome in the water. The fish can't handle it. And uh, props to Mr. Blaine Chocolate for coming up with the uh, game changer style of fly. His stuff looks really awesome. So, and I also have to give credit to uh, old Mike Schultz. That's I, I saw him do a video on this, and that that kind of turned the lights on for me. So, kudos to you two. Anyway, the stinger hook on this one is going to be a fully mill uh, Bonio carp hook. So this is a newer hook from them. It's got a Teflon finish. I've used it for a bunch of trout lately, and it's super, super sticky. So this is a size 8 that we'll tie on. And the reason I'm using it for the, the stinger on this game changer is because it's got a really short shank. I'm going to just use 140 thread for the duration of this until I get to the head, and then I'll switch over to GSP. So for the tail on this one, I'm actually going to use Marabou. And the marabou that I have is from a spay hackle and chickaboo pelt. Yeah, I know it sounds weird, but that's what it's really called. But it's basically like a full pelt of marabou. Down here it's a little bit stringier marabou, and up here it's this really full, nice, and thick stuff. So for this tail, I'm going to pull out two feathers from that super gnarly stick or thick stuff. All right, so I've got these feathers. You can see that they're they're really full marabou feathers, and uh, I'm gonna just bunch them together and tie those in, both together. And I'll wrap those the length of the body. so that's the base behind it and then I'm also going to just take a little bit of flash just like one piece of flashaboo I'm going to tie it on either side of the tail and you'd be surprised at how much flash and, and motion that gives your fly so I'm going to tie those in a little bit longer than the tail give us a little bit of lateral line action okay now the bulk of this fly is going to be tied with a whiting hen saddle this color is barred dark ginger everybody knows this from the dry fly world but it's also awesome for for hen hackle and we have a, a bajillion of these right now if you're watching this in september of 2018 anyway so the idea is for the back portions of the fly you're going to start with these feathers closer down to the the top that are smaller and then you you kind of pluck out feathers that are a little bit bigger as you go on to size up the taper of this fly so i'll just grab those and you can do three at a time and also you can use two different colors at the same time and i'm just going to grab those by the tips and create a tie-in point just like that. Now I like to tie those in so that when I wrap them that the the colored side goes forward. So the easiest way for me to do it, and you probably have a different way, is just to hold them on the far side of the hook and just lay them down just like you want them to wrap. So I won't trim those or anything, I'm just going to wrap them forward. So at this point, this is a little technique that will help you with this, is if you grab the fi fibers and pull them back, if you just pinch those fibers, they won't really fold very well. But if you pull them back and then wiggle your fingers a little bit, that's going to fold those fibers on both sides of that, that stem, and it's going to give you a, a much nicer fold point. So I'm going to do that up the, the shank or the, up the stem. And then I'm going to give it a wrap and preen those wraps back after every wrap. And then you can get a little bit of the fluff into this. And then trim it off. 
So this is the point where you realize that this fly uses a whole bunch of feathers. And you're right, it does. It's a good thing these things are only like 13 bucks. So now I'm going to grab two more feathers that are a little bit bigger and I'm going to do the same thing. So once I've got gotten the hook totally wrapped up, trim it off and whip finish. Uncle Ken would say, I don't know why you need to keep going with that fly. You can fish it just like it is. Well, you're right, Uncle Ken, you can. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these shanks and we're going to put poke it through the eye here. And sometimes, like it, these don't allow for much room. Sometimes you have to bend them out. But with this one, I'll be able just to kind of pop it over and get it in place. So still moves around plenty. So once I have that little piece in there, I'm going to take that uh, shank and you have to be really careful not to put it too close to the tip of your jaw or else you'll, you'll screw it all up. So put it back in your vise and the more pressure you put on this the the more of a chance you're going to have of this spitting out of your vise. So kind of be gentle with it. And as you can see it kind of closed the gap as I wrapped that thread over it. And I want my thread to go all the way back to the where it's touching the vise. And it won't really do that really easily. It'll want to kind of slip back down. So I, I dab a little bit of super glue on it. So I'm going to take some super glue and put it up on the metal. You can see that we've trimmed this tip of the, the brush down quite a bit. So using minimal pressure you're just going to kind of walk your thread up that shank until it sits about right there and now you can crank on it a little bit more and it will stay nicely right there so back to the feathers I'm going to grab two more feathers that are a little bit further up and as you can see they get a little bit longer as they go up the, the saddle so you don't have to use quite as many. The back half of the fly use, uses more feathers than the front. The other thing is you can see that the eye on this shank isn't quite closed all the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to create a bump of thread to essentially close that off. That way when I whip finish it, it will give me a nice surface to do that. So, same technique, pinch and wrap. So you'll see the sequence here. I'm just going to continue to do that with a little bit bigger feathers. I'm going to add another shank and we'll come back to you when we get the big hook in the place. <laughs> Please, no circus jazz music. <laughs> Okay, so you can see I've got a, a bit of a taper going on from fat to skinny, from Cheech to Lance. That was a good joke, dad joke, right? Okay, for the front half, front part of this hook, I'm using a Gamakatsu B10S size 2, and you could even use a size 1 on this. But I'm just going to take some barbell eyes or eyeballs, or what are balls eyes? That's what they're 
I like this one a lot because um, it's pretty wide. It, it's got a narrow connection between those. And uh, I'll kind of put them in so that if you were to draw a circle right here and the, the eyes were on the outside of the circle, the point of the eye would kind of be on the edge of that circle, if that makes any sense. If that doesn't make any sense, just put them right there. <laughs> so once you have those figurated and all that fancy goodness, you gotta seat these with glue or else they will rotate on you. Get a bunch of glue all up in there. It's a good chance you'll glue your fingers together when you tie this as well. Now I'll just take some articulation wire of your choosing and I'm going to tie that in. Actually I'm going to put a thread base down. It helps it grip a little better. And as you can see with the with the eyes on this side of the hook shank it will ride inverted and that's what I want. So I'm going to leave quite a bit of, of uh, wire hanging out the front. And then I'm going to wrap back down the bend just a little tiny bit. And the reason for that is it, it lessens the chance that you're going to foul your back section of the hook. Okay, so once we have this, no connection beads or anything like that, we're just going to make a loop of wire roughly the size of the, the eye of the shank. Maybe a little smaller so it still can move around but it's not going to give it too much play. With this fancy rich people vise that Curtis has I can just stick the back hook in this little material clip holder thinger. I wish I could tie on a Renzangus one of these days. So I'll trim the other piece of wire roughly the, the same length as the front piece and instead of cutting those off I'll just bend those down and those cut pieces can be a little bit sharp so just loosen your thread pressure as you go over those so you don't break your thread. I know a guy who used to do that a lot. Okay now I'm just gonna take some glue and go over those thread wraps just to kind of seat them in place. Okay, now more of the same program. I'm going to do more of the hen hackle all the way up to the eyes. I'm being rudely interrupted. Get your social media out of here. Kids these days, you're on the faces book and the insta face don't even know how to have a conversation probably went to college by the way these are 15 millimeter shanks you can use 10s you can use 20s you can use basically whatever you want <laughs> So as you can see, we've got the jointed sections sections of the fly back here. Kind of a nice little tapered situation going up to the head. And I'm going to tie in some little fins on this one. So I'm going to use a Dun Grizzly Hebert Miner hen saddle for those things. So I'm just going to take one of these feathers and I'm going to lay it on the side. Uh, kind of like a little fin coming out. You don't have to do this part. They're surprisingly durable, though. So what I've done is I've kind of trimmed off the hackle like that to, to make a little tie-in point. And then I'll just kind of mash it in there. You're going to need to make them a little bit longer than you'd think. But just like that, so it's cupping outward. So I'm just kind of placing that on the bottom of the, the hook, and it will my thread will kind of rotate that around to where it needs to be. 
All right, so we've got two little feather fins hanging on there. Got to get rid of this guy. Now is where the fun begins. We're going to put a deer hair slider head on this one. And so I'm going to get rid of my UTC and I'm going to put on GSP. So I'm using 200 denier GSP. You can use 100 or you can use 150. I definitely wouldn't go under 100 because the thinner your, your GSP is, uh, the more likely it is to cut through your, your batch of hair that you're using. So on this one, I'm just going to use a, a patch of natural deer hair. I've had this one for a little bit. It's a pretty big piece. It's got some really nice long fibers on it. And again, I'm using the old hair stacker made by Justin Ugate. This is probably the biggest packer known to man. And it's awesome for stuff like this. So the key to putting a deer hair head on a fly, and, and keep in mind, I'm only going to put deer hair on one side of the hook shank. So you hear people talk about spinning deer hair all the time. This is not spinning hair. This is just flaring hair. And I'm just going to use one color of hair, but I'll probably use two clumps of it just so I can get it as tight as I want it. So you'll see the, the full technique. Anyway, you start out with a pretty healthy clump of deer hair. And it's critical that you remove all the under fluff. So I'm going to take a fancy comb, and if I comb that, you can see almost in one pass I get it all. So get rid of that stuff or it won't align. It will have problems flaring as well. So I'm taking it with my fingers a little bit and getting that out. So I'm going to take this hair. And yeah, there's there are a few broken tips in there, but that's fine. Because I'm just going to trim it. Anyway, I'm going to take these tips and I'm going to put them so that they're about the to the bend of the hook. Uh, that when they flare, they're, they're going to kind of get sucked down in, so they'll shorten up a little bit. So I'm going to grab that with my, kind of my, my offhand. I'm going to put two loose wraps into this, okay? So my thread's going straight down. You can see the hair still on the very top of the hook. I haven't let go with my finger. Now I'm going to take one of my fingers, and I'm going to push down right here as I pull the thread forward forward toward the eyes and the reason I'm going to do that is so that I leave a little bit of an indentation so I can tie in the next batch of hair so I'll just show you that I'll get it started you can see now I've got a nice little spot to put in the next batch of hair and it's easier to do this than talk and do this at the same time so bear with me now I'm going to get another patch of hair. Okay, so I've got another clump of hair. So I'm just going to, you know, the best way I can, just kind of put it right down in on top of the other one. So I'm going to take my hand and just kind of hold it in place a little bit. And then I'm going to wiggle my thread through those butt ends on one side. And down the other, I'll try to show you a little bit better once I get one wrap. So you can see I've got one wrap of thread just kind of right down on that. There's still no deer hair on the bottom side of this hook. And I'll just try to follow the same path as the one before. And now I'm not, I, I don't need to keep my finger on there because this is the last clump of hair. So now as I pull it tight, it will just kind of fill up that whole void. So keep in mind both of those deer hair uh, clumps are only tied in with two wraps of thread each. So once I have that in place uh, I'm going to clean up the bottom of the fly now just because it looks like just a, a bunch of nasty thread wraps and everything. So I'm going to take a little bit of 
Bruiser Blend Junior in cream color. Kind of make a little belly on the fly. This is a slider style belly. So as I rotate my fly upside down, and a rotary vise definitely helps out with this whole deal, I have to make sure that I, I'm holding my, my bobbin as well. Because if not, it will just kind of fall into that deer hair. It might unravel a little bit. So holding on to my bobbin, I'm just going to take a little that bit of that bruiser blend and wrap it around the eyes, just the eyes. I'm going to do that twice so that you basically just have bruiser blend coming out from under the eyes. I didn't wrap my my thread through the deer hair when I tied that bruiser in and just two wraps is enough. From there instead of whip finishing because like where would you whip finish right now? I'm just going to turn this upside down and I'm going to dab some super glue down into my last thread wraps. Once I have that, I'll just trim off my thread and fish it just like that. Boom. Not really. All right. So this is this is where people struggle the most. Um, I'm going to just trim this with with uh, a razor blade. All right, so I'm going to just brush out this hair a little bit so I know that I haven't trapped any fibers down and I'm also going to brush out the bruiser blend, kind of make, make it look nice. And then I'm going to take one of these uh, double-sided razor blades. And what I like to do is just curve it so that it's so curved that the, the eyes just barely fit in there. And the idea is I'm going to take that blade and I'm just going to make one angled cut and it will get most of the deer hair. So I'm going to pull up the deer hair. I'm going to put the blade in and kind of rotate it back and forth. And do it some more until you hit those butts of hair. So I can pull out some of these extra butts that are right here. And then once once I get it where I want it, I can just take the razor blade and uh, trim up a little bit. This is a brand new razor blade, so it cuts through really, really well. But as you can see, that creates a nice little wedge-shaped head. Um, now if I want to, I can come in here and clean up this additional deer hair and that's a, a nice hard head that's going to be buoyant on the top it's going to sink on the bottom and then just to finish it up I'm going to give it a little bit of a hot spot underneath I'm going to color that little dab of thread that's showing that's totally insignificant but anyway that is the feathered game changer version of a slider minnow and you can see that profile um, one thing about this fly also is you can see that the deer hair kind of covers up the hook gap but when a fish eats it that definitely compresses down there's a lot of hook gap left anyway that is the feathered game changer version or the slider version of the feathered game changer.